Okay, today we're going to be looking at um, generalizations of uh, motion in a straight line. And we're going to start off by thinking of velocity as a derivative um, of displacement with respect to time. So, if we were to um, think of a displacement time graph, so time would be along the um, x-axis and displacement in metres on the y-axis. The velocity is represented by the gradient of the curve. So let's just think of, say we had some um, line that described um, the motion of a particle, the displacement versus time, the gradient of the displacement time graph gives us the velocity. So this is true for all curves. Um, it's true if it's a straight line or if it's a quadratic, it, it, it doesn't matter. Um, so we can we can use this to give us the velocity of the motion of a particle. Say we had this time here, t, and if we had the equation of um, this curve, um, what this function is, we, could dif we can differentiate this. We can do um, ds by dt and get the velocity. And we can find that velocity at some time t. Um, <clears throat> so let's look at an example to show how this works. So a particle moves in a straight line So its displacement um, s in meters uh, at time t in seconds is given by this this um, function s equals t cubed minus 14 t. Find the, um, an expression for the velocity at time t. So s equals t cubed minus 14 t. Now we know that the velocity is equal to ds by dt, so we're going to just um, find this, um, differentiate this. So power of 3 comes down, so it's going to be 3 t. 3 minus 1 is 2 minus 14, because um, this is like t to the power of 1, 1 times 14 is 14. And this one minus um one minus one is zero, so we lose the t. Um, so this is the expression for the velocity, and that would be in meters per second. And so you would add the units to this, um, because sometimes you might have um, the displacement time function might be used using different um, units if that's stated, but. We know this is metres and seconds, so we'll state the units. Now, what this means um, is you can then, you, could, you, you can use um, graphing software to graph the displacement function, but you can also then graph the function for the velocity and see how the velocity will change over time. So let's look at another example. A ball moves in a straight line so its 
displacement s meters at time t seconds is given by s equals 2 t cubed minus 10 t squared. Find the velocity at t equals 2 seconds. So we're going to differentiate s. So v equals ds by dt. So 3 times 2 is 6. 3 minus 2 is... 3 minus 1 is 2. Minus 10 times 2 is 20. And that will be t. And so the velocity at t equals 2 will be 6 times 2 squared minus 20 times 2. The brackets around these just, just keep it um, so, no, so we don't get confused what we're doing at which time. So t um, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 6 is 24. Um, and that's minus 40. So it's going to be minus 16. So the speed, um, that's its velocity, and the speed is equal to the magnitude of velocity, which would be 16 meters per second. That's meters per second too. So that gives us the displacement gives us the, the velocity gives us the um, speed and direction and the magnitude is the actual speed. Let's look at another one. It's a bit more. This could be a bit more tricky. I have to think a bit more about this one. A particle moves forward and backwards. So this is important pieces of information. Along a straight line. So that its displacement S meters from the initial position at time t is given by s equals 2t cubed minus 12t squared plus 16t. Find the distance that it travels in the first five seconds. Now, the displacement is the vector quantity. So this gives us that and in this formula we can if we were to find out <coughs> at time t t equals five um, we're finding the displacement of the particle at that moment in time. We're going to find it out so we'll have two times five cubed minus twelve times five squared plus 18 times 5. Working all that out, you're going to get 40 metres. However, we see that this is um, a cubic function. So it's going to have, if you were to graph it, it's going to have curves, which tells us this particle, its 
moving, reverbing tools moving backwards and forwards. So if we want the distance travelled, we don't know what it's done prior to this point at t equals 5. So if we were to actually, um, this is time and this is displacement, if we were to graph it, we would find something like this. So at t equals 5, we've got up here 40. But this doesn't tell us the distance because it's gone to, it, it's, it's made some turns in its journey. So we need to think about what are the turning points of this function. Um, so we're going to consider turning points. Now, remember, a turning point is when the velocity, when the, when the um, gradient of a function is zero. So a turning point would be here and here. And at these points, the velocity of the particle will be zero because it's stationary for a moment. If you think, of, think for a moment of throwing a ball in the air, air, it goes up and then there's a moment in time as it turns to come back down where it's in effect stationary midair as it turns. Um, similarly if you were to bounce a ball off the ground it goes down and then it kind of rebounds that split moment in time where it's kind of stationary and these are turning points where the gradient is zero. So we're going to do ds by dt. So 2 times 3 is 6t and it's going to be squared minus 12 times 2 is 24t plus 18. And we want to find out when is that going to be 0. So we are going to um, factorise this um, equation. So I'm going to take the 6 out because we don't need it. We can um, uh, get rid of that just now. Um, so it'll be um, four. What's fourteen? Um, and then um, plus three equals zero. And we can essentially ignore the divide through by the, the, the six. So we'll get t minus one t minus 3 equals 0, so t must be 1 or 3. So this is 1 and this is 3. These are the turning points. So now we look back to what is the displacement, not the, this is velocity remember, what is the displacement at t equals um, 1. So how far has it gone in this this point here? And we find the displacement would be um, 2 times 1 cubed minus 12 times 1 plus 18 is going to be 8 metres. The displacement... at t equals 3 is 54 minus 108 plus 54 and that's equals to 0 meters so that shows us that at 3 it's come back to the, the, the starting point um, but if you think about that as a distance it's gone 8 meters and if it's come back to the beginning, it must have re-gone those 8 metres. It's gone the same distance. So the dis total distance is our first 8 metres. Now, because the displacement is 0, it's, it's, it's travelled back 8 metres. So another 8 metres. And then at the 5 second point, it's 40 metres away from its starting point. So it's travelled another 40 metres. 
which gives us a total of 56 metres. Um, so if we were to draw the, mo the motion, you'd have something It's going to look like that. So you've got our 8, 0, this is 8, 8, 8, and 40. So I hope that helps.